Chilson Motors with Gene Chilson, our sponsors of our Wax Farm Show podcast. At Chilson's Corner Motors of Cadott and Chilson Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram, we have an excellent selection of certified pre-owned Ram models to choose from. Purchase a certified Ram and receive our seven-year, 100,000-mile warranty and its factory back coverage from Ram. A certified Ram offers a great deal of confidence and peace of mind with a seven-year, 100,000-mile warranty. And we now have a great selection in stock and ready for immediate delivery. And ready to get those farm chores done. Absolutely. To see all the models, call, click, or visit Chilson's Corner Motors of Cadott on the corner of Highway 27 and X or Chilson Chrysler Dodge on Business Highway 53 or visit us on the web at chilson.com. And remember, let our family take care of your family. Hey, did you know Bluff Country is located in Mondovi? And it's your locally owned hometown feed and seed supplier. Whether it's your pet or your business, they have the products and service that you need. They even offer agronomy services from seed to fertilizers and chemicals and even feed and forage sampling. Bluff Country Feed and Seed is your hometown feed and seed supplier. To learn more about Bluff Country, check out their website at bluffcountryfs.com. It's the Wax Midwest Farm Report podcast with Joe Welke, Kristen Smith, and me, Bob Bosold. Wax 104.5 on a beautiful Wednesday morning. Shake of the day, baby. It's chore time. Bob and Joe with you as we look at the weather, farm news, markets. Lots to cover today. And I'm telling you what, Joe. I don't think we could have had a better day than we had yesterday weather-wise. It was absolutely a perfect day in my mind. It was perfect. Should have been out on the lake. I was. Oh. <laughs> I was. Later in the afternoon, I had to go over to Stanley Boyd and uh, do some programming. And uh, then middle of the afternoon, I stopped and went out on uh, Lake Wasoda. And it was like I had my own lake. Nobody was there. It was unbelievable. I bet I didn't, you know, Lake Wasoda and the Chippewa River. You know, boats all over the place. I'll bet yesterday I didn't see 10 other boats. It was unbelievable. It was just like riding in your bathtub. The water was so smooth. What a perfect day temperature-wise. And I don't think today is going to be too far off from that. But uh, what a day yesterday. So hopefully you enjoyed it. It doesn't get better than that. That's what they call one of those Chamber of Commerce days. Good day to have a birthday. Hey, how'd you uh, you celebrate your dad, Larry Zimmerman, had his birthday yesterday? Did you do anything last night? Well, no. Why not? But I called him, (laughs) and he said nobody else called him, so I figured I was one up. Really? Well, that's a shame. They didn't have a you didn't have a big birthday party for him or anything. No, we had meetings. There was meetings all night. So what about his birthday? Apparently. (laughs) Well. Sorry about that, Larry. <laughs> if I'd have known that, I'd have brought you a cake. But I'm sure Mom baked him a cake. But, uh, again, happy birthday. Well, uh, we were talking yesterday about the State Fair and how much everybody was eating down there. How many of the ears of those sweet corn did you eat? Just two. They were kind of expensive, so I made sure I just got my money's worth. <laughs> yeah, four bucks uh, four bucks an ear down there. They served over 100,000 ears of corn at the State Fair. There was a long line, an awful lot of the yeah. day there. Yeah, there were a lot of people down there. How many cream puffs did you have? Just one. Well, you were short because you were 320,000 other people that also enjoyed cream puffs down at the State Fair. So a good show, and we'll talk more about that as far as attendance and uh, exhibits. We already talked about uh, the fair, the auction down there, the governor's blue ribbon auction, and uh, so many other things that always happen at the State Fair, but uh, good attendance, well over a million people, and we'll tell you more about that as we said. Next year, mark it on your 2023 calendar, August 3rd through the 13th down at State Fair Park in West Allis. We'll talk about uh, what that Friday report said about Wisconsin crops as we uh, look at a little smaller crop nationwide, not here in Wisconsin. We're going to be a little bigger, not a whole lot, but a little bit bigger. And real estate values. Got farmland, buildings, whatever. They got the values out of how much it's worth. We'll talk about all that stuff coming up, including the weather. Not a bad day, but again, if you got to hay down, get it up because there's some rain coming. 
The crack of dawn never sounded so good. Wax 104.5 and the Midwest Farm Report. Oh, also reading the news from the Wisconsin State Fair. Over a million people and they figure about 15 million tattoos. Pretty accurate? Yeah, I figured. I actually was thinking about coming back with a tattoo just to uh, just well, to I don't poke have a the bear. I don't have a problem with tattoos, but uh, where some people have them and what they have, or once in a while you scratch your head, but uh, they uh, they show up at the state fairs, and of course we'll get another look at that soon at the Minnesota State Fair, the great Minnesota get-together over Labor Day weekend, but in the meantime, for today... Another nice day, about 81, partly cloudy, then rain moving in Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Look for rain to 70. Sunday, we're looking for sunshine again, partly sunny at least, and we'll get about 78 right now. 60 degrees in the Chippewa Valley. 60 degrees, 81 to high today. Should be a nice day. It's about a minute after 5. This is 104.5 FM, WAXX Old Cloud. Let's find out what's going on. NBC News Radio, I'm Trey Thomas. GOP Senator Lisa Murkowski will advance to Alaska's general election. The incumbent will be joined on the ballot by Republican Kelly Shabaka and Democrat Patricia Chesbro. Tuesday's primary was the first to use a nonpartisan ranked voting system that was expected to favor Murkowski. She was the only GOP senator to vote to convict former President Donald Trump during his second impeachment trial. Wyoming Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney is set to lose that state's lone U.S. House seat after a primary loss to a Trump-backed attorney. Tonight, Harriet Hageman has received the most votes in this primary. She won. I called her to concede the race. This primary election is over, but now the real work begins. Cheney says she wasn't willing to go along with lies from former President Trump about the 2020 election. Updated COVID boosters are potentially going to be available early next month. White House COVID coordinator Dr. Ashish Jha predicted the new boosters, which target a dominant strain of the virus, would be available in roughly the next three weeks. Saudi Arabia is sentencing a mother of two young children to 34 years in prison for using Twitter. Salma Al-Shabaab is a Ph.D. student at Leeds University in England. England. After she returned home for a vacation, a special terrorist court sentenced her to 34 years in prison, followed by a 34-year travel ban. She was sentenced on Monday for having a Twitter account and for following and retweeting dissidents and activists. You're listening to NBC News Radio. Wax 104.5 and the Midwest Farm Report. And as we've been telling you this morning, it's going to be another nice day today. Partly cloudy should get into the low 80s, and then it'll change for a few days. Down to about 60 tonight, and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday in the upper 70s, but chances of rain, and looks like pretty good chances. I don't think we're going to have any gully washers, but uh, some moisture coming through. So if you got hay down, adjust. In other words, get it up today. Then Sunday, we've got uh, partly sunny skies looking for a high about 78 rice lakes 57 right now medford very comfortable at 54 60 in wausau 56 over at marshfield down at lacrosse at 61 green bay 58 madison sun prairie at 55 this morning at 65 in milwaukee and here in the chippewa valley 60 degrees farm markets are brought to you by rural mutual insurance rural mutual insurance Keeping Wisconsin strong. Get insurance from a company who knows Wisconsin and cares about your community. You may know Rural Mutual Insurance as the number one farm insurer, but did you know they also offer competitive home and auto rates? Visit RuralMutual.com to learn more about products and discounts. Rural Mutual Insurance. Keeping Wisconsin strong. Feeding information to the folks who feed you. Wax 104.5 and the Midwest Farm Report. Seven and a half minutes after five o'clock here at Wax. Time for our markets, courtesy of Rural Mutual Insurance and Jill, the cash livestock numbers. Choice fed beef steers are 145 to 157 and three quarters with mixed at 123 to 144. Choice fed beef heifers are 143 to 151 and a half to one, with mixed at nine, 119 to 142. 
Choice Fed Holstein steers are 130 to 145 with selects at 92 to 129. Cows are 75 to 106 with bulls at 80 to 112. Butcher hogs are 86 to 105 with sows at 67 to 78 and a half. Boars are 25 to 32. New crop market lambs are 75 to 120 with feeder lambs at 85 to 150. Ewes are 65 to 90 with go- small goats at 10 to $180. Medium goats 65 to $270. Large goats are 100 to $400. With nanny goats at fifty to two hundred fifty-five dollars. At the Mercantile Exchange, livestock futures were mixed. Cattle prices were higher. Hogs were lower yesterday. October live cattle one forty-five sixty-seven at the close, up one eighty-seven. December one fifty-one twenty, up one forty-seven. February one fifty-five thirty-five. That was up one twenty-two. Feeder cattle for September one eighty-five forty-seven at the close. That's up two forty-seven. October one eighty-eight oh two, up two forty-two. November feeder cattle one eighty nine forty up two thirty in January at one eighty nine sixty up two ten. As we said, lean hog carcass contracts were lower. October close ninety six fifty seven down four dollars. December eighty seven seventy down three fifteen. February at ninety twenty five down two seventy and April hogs ninety two ninety seven down two fifty two. Board of trade was lower yesterday. Some timely rains across much of the growing parts of the country. Also concerns over China and also the world economy, but overnight they turned around a little bit. December corn overnight after again down yesterday. December corn up two cents this morning, six twelve a bushel. Oats up two to three at four twelve. December wheat up six to seven at eight oh nine. November soybeans up eleven cents at thirteen ninety two and October meal up three dollars and forty cents a ton at four hundred four dollars and ten cents. Cheese prices unchanged barrels one ninety four and three quarters Blocks a dollar eighty nine a pound. Butter down two and a quarter at two ninety six and a quarter. But class three prices were higher. August class three milk up a penny at twenty seventeen. September closed fifty two cents higher at twenty eighty seven. October up nineteen at twenty ninety eight. November up thirty six at twenty one sixty four. December class three up eighteen at twenty one twenty eight. Prices were higher out through July. That's a look at some of our markets this morning. We'll go to the sale barns later on, but the market is brought to you by Rural Mutual Insurance. Ten and a half minutes after five, 60 degrees out there. It's a nice morning here at the shank of the day, baby. Keeping it rural. Wax 104.5 and the Midwest Farm Report. Middle August, we're getting uh, close to the end as far as the cropping season is concerned. Still a month or two away for the frost hits here, but uh, let's find out what's going on. Brad Matson joins us once again, lead agronomist with Provision Partners Cooperative in western and central Wisconsin. And Brad, uh, first of all, good morning. Give us an overview of uh, crops. Boy, when you see that weekly crop progress report, you got to feel pretty good overall about the crop in Wisconsin, don't you? Oh, yeah. We're getting stressed. I mean, there's we've been, so the rainfall has been so variable. Some people have been totally blessed and, and Crops look absolutely fantastic. Yield checks that I've done so far have been really, really good. Other parts are are getting stressed. We got some down in the Black River Falls area that, that some of that corn is actually done. It's brown all the way past the ear at this point in time. So uh, really variable. Um, so yields are going to be really variable this year. What are you seeing as far as some of the challenges we had last year? Let's talk about tar spot first of all. I haven't heard much about it so far. Is it out there? I found it in about three different fields. Um, according to the uh, the models that predict uh, tar spot severity, we should have had an extreme, extreme outbreak of tar spot this year. I think that the winds uh, are, were our savior. Everybody was complaining about trying to get anything sprayed all summer, and that's been kind of a blessing in disguise. So when we've been having these damp mornings where the leaf wetness is high, which is really conducive to tar spot, those winds have came there and, and limited that dramatically. So tar spot isn't nearly as bad. been seeing quite a bit of anthracnose out in the cornfield, so we're going to have to watch those those fields as far as standability and stuff this fall. So there's some corn north and corn leaf blight, but overall leaf diseases or diseases in the corn have been exceptionally good. Let's talk about insect challenges. Are you seeing any of that? Oh, yes. Uh, we've been spraying a couple fields. We've 
reached the threshold now on Japanese beetles in uh, soybeans. We've actually sprayed a couple fields for uh, grasshoppers and some of these drier areas. They Those populations have just exploded. Even seen some uh, effects of the Japanese beetles in the cornfields clipping sil- silks here earlier. Um, not very, not economically damaging, but there are some ears on the edge of the fields that uh, didn't pollinate because the silks were clipped off because of Japanese beetles. But uh, you're going to want to keep an eye on those right now because it is with this drill pattern of weather we're in, populations are increasing, and when you get up to that 20% chewing on the leaves, uh, you're going to want to be spraying for them at that this point. What about, uh, again, other challenges out there? You were mentioning before we went on the air, some brown spot, leaf diseases out there. How serious are some of those? Well, we've seen some brown spot. We've seen some, a lot of bacterial blight in soybeans this year. A little bit of frog eye. have not seen any white mold at this point, which is, you know, with the canopy staying open a lot longer this year, I guess I, we really wouldn't have expected to see white mold. And they're closing up now, but usually unless, unless we have a pot abortion or a flower abortion, wouldn't really expect to see a, an outbreak of white mold from this point on. But the brown spot is uh, we're starting to see a lot of leaves defoliate because of that. The stems that those leaves are attached to, or those pods will be susceptible to abortion or they're going to be really small beans at that point because you're not going to have the energy coming in to fill out the starches and stuff like that from to make those beans uh, the size that we would expect. Wow, the wind chill observation looks good, but when you get right down into it, there are some challenges, and uh, Brad and his staff of agronomists available to get out in the field to take a look at your crops and make sure you do it. So Brad Matson with us once again, lead agronomist with Provision Partners Cooperative on our Provision Partners Cooperative program this Wednesday morning on WAX. And we'll have Brad with us again next Wednesday morning, but uh, we got some crop numbers to take a look at. To look to, for the most part, as we said, things are good, but he's finding spotty problems. How about uh, the overall look? We'll do that next as we look at some farm news on Wax. Brought to you by Chili Implement in Chile. Wax 104.5 and the Midwest Farm Report. All right, how good is the crop going to be in Wisconsin, at least as far as the USDA economists say, Jill? So last Friday's USDA crop production forecast says Wisconsin corn and soybean growers will produce bigger crops this fall as both are predicted to be up 1%. Corn is now forecast to yield 555 million bushels on acreage yields of 185 bushels an acre, up 5 bushels from 2021. Of the 4 million acres planted corn across the state this year, 3 million will be harvested for grain. The soybean crop in the state is now forecast to come in at 115 million bushels on yields of 52 bushels an acre, up 3 bushels from a year ago. State farmers will harvest a little over 2.2 million acres of soybeans this year. That report also shows our winter wheat crop as an estimated 20 million bushels, up 9% from last year on yields of 77 bushels an acre. The oat harvest is expected to be just under 4 million bushels, but that's up 5% from last year as the yields are expected to to be 61 bushels an acre. Alfalfa and alfalfa mixed hay production is expected to be down for this year, down to 2.76 million tons, 5% less than a year ago on yields averaging three point, just over 3 tons an acre, down slightly from a year ago. So, not a bad crop out there because uh, we've been lucky to get uh, some of that rain that other parts of the country have not gotten. Coming up, we're going to hear about hemp. That's not in the crop progress report. And we'll catch up on what's going on. Some hemp field days. Uh, Pam Yonke had a chance to talk to Carl Dooley down in Buffalo County about hemp and the hemp field days coming up on Wax. Agriculture. It's a Wisconsin way of life. Wax 104.5 and the Midwest Farm Report. This week's crop progress report around Wisconsin shows the crops are looking awfully good. Bob Bosel here at the northern end of the world's longest barn. But one crop they don't include in the crop progress report is the hemp crop. But, Pam, you've got an update for us. What's the latest? 
Well, you know, Bob, that crop has been particularly interesting over the past couple of years in Wisconsin. Fabulous farm by Pam Yankee, southern end of the world's longest barn in Madison, because when Wisconsin was allowed to re-engage in hemp production, we got a lot of people that jumped in on the possibilities. But trying to find a market for that product became increasingly more challenging. Mother Nature didn't help a lot of the early hemp producers. Well, we're getting more refined information out today, thanks in part to some field research. Carl Dooley is an ag agent in Buffalo County that was one of the first that started the conversation about hemp production. Now, coming up on August 19th and August 25th, they've got two field events where they're encouraging anybody that wants to be involved in the hemp conversation to join them. They'll be focused in on hemp seeding rates and the potential as a forage. Some new opportunities many folks may not have thought about. I talked with Carl and asked him to take me back to when he first became intrigued with hemp production in Wisconsin. The conversations really started about five years ago when we were trying to get it uh, approved that we could grow it under under a research um, um, uh research protocol because that's the only way we could do it until it was approved by by the federal government and uh, so those and it was mainly driven for me by a group of farmers here in buffalo county who had um and and specifically a group of farm bureau farmers who had promoted it and trying to get legalized for for industrial hemp for quite a few years in their resolutions that they took forward to the state this is the same group of farmers that i've worked with for many years and, and the group has expanded um, into many looking at many different alternative crops and and industrial hemp seemed like one of the ways to go. Um, Buffalo County was uh, was fairly large grower of industrial hemp back in the early 1900s. I think it was the largest hemp processing plant in the nation was in Winona, Minnesota, just across the river from us. So a lot of contracts. When I first started in Buffalo County, I, a lot of the quote old guys then. Um, told me about how they remember growing it, and we still had it, quote, as ditch weed growing wild. And it just seemed kind of a natural for us to take a look at it again. Now, you've been really uh, instrumental in forging partnerships with our Native American folks that are here in Wisconsin. Why did that seem to work out as a good partnership, Carl? Well, there were, there were, there were three agents. It's Jerry Clark up in Chippewa, myself in Buffalo County, and then Bill Hafman, who was in Monroe County. Um, uh, that we've been, we were working with the industrial hemp with the idea. I had a plot for a couple of years, just a small, really demo plot in Buffalo County. And, and Bill and Jerry got really interested. And Bill said, Bill has a, quite a few connections with the, with the Ho-Chunk Nation over the years on other projects and, and was approached and said, yeah, we'd be interested in partnering. And it's been a great partnership with the, with the Ho-Chunks. Their, uh, their, uh, director of, or their secretary of the, of the DNR, who agriculture is currently under in the Ho Chunk Nation, Tina Brown was great to work with, and uh, they've uh, they're trying to get their um, their uh, Department of Agriculture a little more organized. And they hired a gentleman by the name of Forrest Fundmaker, and uh, Forrest has also been great. Uh, in fact, he helped us out on this uh, past Tuesday when we did some harvest down in in the plots because uh, we also have a forage. Uh, part of this, looking at it as a quality forage or an emergency forage for dairy cows. So uh, that it, it's become a great partnership and a true partnership. It's not us doing the work or them doing the work. We do the work together. Excellent. Now let's talk a little bit about the evolution of the crop here in Wisconsin, Carl, because uh, from the the hard work that it took to get it approved for growing here in the state of Wisconsin, we had initial everybody wanted in, and uh, enthusiasm seems to have been tempered over the past couple of years. Tell me what you've observed. Right, and we the the enthusiasm was mostly about CBD oil hemp, and we've done uh, we did a project for two years with Oregon State. It was a national project on CBD oil. We're not doing it this year for a number of reasons, but uh, um, the CBD industry has has really leapt forward pretty fast. We're looking at mostly the fiber and the grain industry, and and uh, and in some ways, right now, there's not a lot of markets out there for fiber and grain, especially in Wisconsin or the Midwest. But we're really um, we're we're pretty enthusiastic about the future of those possible markets because of where hemp was and 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 where it where it's kind of headed. I I had the opportunity, or I took the opportunity. A friend and I went over to Germany. I guess it was in 2019. Um, and went to the European Industrial Hemp Conference because they 
They've been growing hemp since the mid '90s, and and have that's where most of our varieties come from. And to look at the enthusiasm and the number of products that they're making from hemp fiber is it was pretty exciting. So um, that kind of energized us and said, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna not bypass CBD. We have a, a specialist down at UW Madison, Shelby Ellison, that is still working quite a bit with CBD. But we said we're we're pretty interested in." in the fiber and the grain because it, it fits our, our style here a little bit more of farming. You can use traditional equipment with it. And uh, we like to think right now we're kind of ahead of the game because there's we're, we're out there learning about production and the markets are starting to, I think, develop. Um, uh, there's a long ways to go there, but uh, we, we, we have a chance to learn a little bit about the crop before we, before we stick it out there in the market. Well, what do you think it takes, Carl, for somebody that's been following the hemp conversation in Wisconsin for a while and thought about getting in? What kinds of bullet points do you share with them, uh, cautionary words before they jump in? Because it is not a cheap or inexpensive crop to get engaged in. That's, uh, that's definitely true. What, uh, what the first thing we talk about is don't, if you want to grow like a half acre or something like that and learn about growing it on your farm, great. Go ahead and do that. But don't produce too much unless you have a market for it. That's the number one, number one um, the message that the, both Jerry, Bill, and I we all give. We also give the message is be a little careful. There's a lot of quote startup companies out there that, in some cases, great companies, in some cases, promising way more than they can deliver, and have um, and have signed some contracts that they couldn't make good on. So be really cautious about some of those markets, as in any new industry that might develop. Um, and and uh, the, the agronomics, I think we're we're starting to figure out. Uh, we had last year we did some fertilizer trials. That was our first replicated trials and a variety trial. We've expanded the variety trial this year with um, in in um, in cooperation with um, Indiana, Illinois, and Michigan. And uh, and so we have more varieties this year, both of fiber and of grain. Um, and we did a seeding rate trial this year because we're not really sure where. Seeding rate for fiber is really going to going to fall in. So we and we have that replicated in all three spots. Let's trial. And again, Carl Dooley, Buffalo County Agricultural Agent, he's been a real leader in the hemp industry here, so to speak, with research and working with growers and finding markets and the plants and equipment and everything that goes with with hemp growing in Wisconsin. And I think uh, there's another hemp field day coming up soon, right, Jill? There is one in Buffalo County down by Elma on Friday the 19th. All right, and we'll get you more details on the time and exact location of that. But if you're in the hemp business, uh, it's still alive in Wisconsin and uh, and growing as everything is this time of the year. Hey, we've got markets to get to. Rocky's going to join us from Premier Livestock in Withy right after this. The first voice of agriculture in Wisconsin for over 35 years. Wax 104.5 and the Midwest Farm Report. Hey, let's get over to Premier Livestock in Withy. Rocky Olson is with us. Morning, Rocky. Good morning. Well, you like most guys in uh, in our age group, we were better at harvesting that stuff than we were growing it. That uh, <laughs> help, that help. <laughs> I, I don't know much about I don't know much about that, Bob. So. <laughs> well, okay, I'll take that answer. But uh, <laughs> I always used to see you carrying a pipe in your back pocket. I now I'm I don't know what that was all about. <laughs> all right. <laughs> How's the market going over at Premier this week? Uh, thank you, Bob. Uh, good morning, everyone. This is how uh, yesterday's special feeder cattle auction shaped up here at Premier. We had a very nice run of feeder cattle. We sold 675 head of feeder cattle. Uh, market was strong. New crop beef calves mostly 140 to 212. Heavier yearlings from 130 to 187. Holstein steers were much stronger uh, this week uh, than the last several specials. Uh, most of the uh, Holstein steers uh, bring in from. Um, uh, 120 to 159. Uh, we had a lighter test on the bred beef cows, but mostly 1,000 to 1550, and we had some pairs up to 1800. Uh, today, Wednesday, we got our hay auction at 930, dairy cattle auction at 11. We do have two complete organic herd dispersals. Uh, one herd is going to be all Holsteins, and red Holsteins, a real strong red influence in that herd. That herd of organics is averaging 65 pounds of milk. Uh, they're all A2, A2 tested, and 95% of that 
that herd is A2, A2. Uh, we also have many uh, conventional reputation fresh cows and spring and heifers. Uh, we have a nice registered red Holstein bull as well. Just uh, keep in mind uh, the pre-consigned conventionals will sell before the organic uh, at 11 o'clock a.m. Like I say, full details on these consignments at premierlivestockandauctions.com. Uh, online bidding is available through Cattle USA. Don't forget, next Friday will be our equipment auction. Uh, we'll have three rings all day, two online rings, and uh, one line will be offline. Uh, one ring will be offline. Uh, online bidding will be through equipmentfacts.com. Uh, if you have any questions, give us a call at Premier, 715-229-2500. And, Bob, that's how it shaped up. Busy times at Premier Livestock. Yep, they are. All right. Have a good one, Rocky. You too, Bob. Thanks. There, there he goes, Rocky Olson over at Premier Livestock in Withy. And what's the weather going to be like? Pretty good today, I think. But then might get a little moisture, which is no problem either. We need that too. We'll find out. Let's get to our weather forecast, shall we? Brought to you by Chippewa Valley Bean. And we got uh, Mike Dandry over there in the uh, in the weather room. Good morning, Mike. Hey, good morning, Bob. How we doing? Well, I was saying earlier that I think yesterday was the most beautiful day of the year. It was perfect yesterday. Absolutely perfect late summer day. You couldn't ask for a better one if you tried, huh? No, it wouldn't have <laughs> been better for the midsummer either, I'll tell you. It was nice. I was out on the lake, and it was just gorgeous out there. Now, is today going to be a carbon copy before we get some some nice moisture? Oh, we'll have some uh, some cl- more clouds in the mix today. Now, we'll have a couple chances at a stray shower here and there, but I think most of the day and most of the area will stay dry. Our highs will get to around the low 80s, so temperature-wise going to look very similar to yesterday. But later tonight, we'll have a few more clouds roll in, and we could see a chance at some showers and maybe a rumble or two of thunder. That'll last us into tomorrow morning, and tomorrow's going to look similar in that we'll have mostly cloudy conditions, so maybe a little bit more in the way of cloud cover, but we'll have those chances on and off of some showers. Now, tomorrow night, we'll have a better chance at showers and possibly a rumble of thunder with our temperatures dipping to the mid-60s, and Friday and Saturday, both better chances of some showers and storms, so... Some Friday night lights might be dodging a few raindrops as well. But Friday and Saturday are going to be cooler into the mid to upper 70s for our highs. And by Sunday, may have a chance at some showers and storms early on. But then we'll start to dry things out towards the afternoon. And for Monday and Tuesday, a little bit more sunshine and back into the upper 70s and low 80s. But for now, we're looking at a few clouds and a temperature of 57 degrees in Eau Claire. Uh, so maybe a few showers at the high school football games, huh? Yeah, so it's not going to be a complete washout, it's looking like, but, uh, yeah, you may want to bring the umbrella just in case. No, don't bring your umbrella. The worst thing you can do is sit in the stands and have an umbrella. Then you're dripping on everybody around you. But if you're <laughs> if you're up towards the top, like up towards the, the grandstand, now if you're, like, in the front of the student section, yeah, you'll probably, you know... Well, believe uh, me, there isn't going to be one student with an umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well... Yeah, I guess I was there, uh, well, maybe about a decade or yeah, so ago. Well, yeah, so. so was I a decade or so ago. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Yep, Bob, you have a good one. There you go, Mike Dandry over there in Skywarn 13, taking a look at our weather on wax. Our weather, brought to you by Chippewa Valley Bean of Menominee. Chippewa Valley Bean, the world's largest kidney bean processor, based right here in Menominee, Wisconsin, wishes all the great Wisconsin farmers a productive and successful end to our 2022 growing season. With harvest just around the corner, it's the perfect time to be looking ahead to next year's rotation, which could include kidney beans. Kidney beans are competitively priced and highly profitable, making them a great addition to your rotation. Call Ben at 715-664-8342 or visit them at cvbean.com to see if growing kidney beans is right for you. For those who work in acres, not in hours, Wax 104.5 and the Midwest Farm Report. Well, let's get to the back 40 and get some news, shall we? As uh, Morgan McCarthy is in the newsroom this morning. Did you get out in the garden yesterday on a gorgeous day? Wasn't that a nice one? Oh, it was real. I bet the pickles in Boyceville were really growing. Well, not only the pickles, the kids were sweating. Siggy's in track <laughs> camp right now. Oh, and, uh, really? You bet. And at the uh, the end of every practice, they give them freeze pops. So what's she doing in, in track now? She's thinking about it. So uh, I, I got to love a girl after my own heart. Takes after her mom. She's not a distance runner. So she said, <laughs> Mama. You, never wanted to, you didn't want to run that far because the chances the boys wouldn't keep running after you. Well, too was far, someone's huh? chasing me, right? <laughs> (laughs) She said, I might do the 400, and then she paused and said, 
Uh, I'll wait and see who else is running it. <laughs> there you go. So she's got a strategy. That's right. It's early in her career. Mm-hmm. What's going on? Well, we're going to start with headlines. It'll take us around the track here pretty close to our area. Good morning. Here's what we're learning today. When you go to vote in the fall, you'll probably be setting a record. Wisconsin election administrator expecting record turnout this fall. Wisconsin Elections Commission boss Megan Wolf yesterday said those preliminary numbers from last week's primary point to record turnout, and she expects the same in November. Wolf said she's going going to put an emphasis on election security as the state is working with election clerks to be ready with more ballots and more training. We'll show you different sides so you can decide. And now the man who applied for Robin Voss's ballot wants to challenge his primary election win. Harry Wade, who runs the group Open, Honest and Transparent Government, yesterday said that he is going to challenge Voss's win because he doesn't trust Wisconsin's election system. In other headlines across the state at the Capitol Tuesday, we look to the political stage where the legislature's joint Joint Finance Committee reallocated more than $21 million in bonding to offset rising costs for Milwaukee and Racine counties to build un- new youth corrections facilities. Committee member Representative Evan Goyke here saying. Certainly doesn't mean that we're done doing all the work necessary to see this transition and modernization of our juvenile justice system in Wisconsin. But it is one significant step forward in the right direction. Now, the facilities are part of that larger long game effort to replace Lincoln Hill School for Boys and Copper Lake School for Girls with regional facilities. And it wasn't just Jill standing in line for that buttery corn or those big cheese curds. Big jump in fair attendance. Plenty of cheese and uh, plenty of cream puffs handed out to it's about a million people. So they had a huge jump from last year's attendance. Probably weather fed into that as well. People getting back out together in person again. And we'll send you out of the fair line and back to the barn with Bob Jill and the Midwest Farm Show right here on Wax 104.5. Aren't politics fun? No, no. Man. boss has got to face that. Oh, boy. Well, I, when I are hear, we going to move on? I hear that Days of Our Lives is coming to an end here <laughs> as a soap opera in the middle of the day. Maybe we replace it with some live cams in the political stage, Boy, that would right? be a good way to do it. Man, <laughs> Seems oh, man. to be similar script writing. I guess so. Thanks, Morgan. Anytime, Bob. Morgan McCarthy in the newsroom this morning as we look at news, markets, calendar, all Right here on Wax. Brought to you by Christensen Sales. Auction schedules online at ChristensenSales.com. On Saturday, September 10th at noon, Christensen Sales will handle the personal property and real estate auction for the Rudy Yeager Estate. And you go out of Gilman on 73 to Babbitt Avenue, then a quarter mile east. At location number one, it'll be buildings and 80 acres of land offered in parcels. Location number two on Badger Lane in the Gilman area, also offered in parcels. You can get a look at open house on Saturday, August 27th from 1030 until noon. That's for the Rudy Yeager Estate Sale in the Gilman area. Saturday, September 10th at noon from Christensen Sales of Abbotsford. The crack of dawn never sounded so good. Wax 104.5 and the Midwest Farm Report. 57 degrees. We're about 18 minutes away from 6 o'clock. We'll have about 81 today and partly cloudy. And before we get to some of our markets, Jill, more of the news in Wisconsin. What's going on? Even uh, we talked a little bit about the crops earlier in the show, but even with those recent crop estimates of the size of the crops for this year, USDA officials still want to know more about small grain production. So this month, agency officials are sending out surveys regarding the production and supplies of U.S. small grains. Producers in 32 states, including Wisconsin, are getting that survey, which needs to be filled out and returned by the end of August. The information which keep which is kept private will be published in the annual small grain summary at the end of September. Wisconsin farm real estate values including land and buildings average $5700 an acre this year. That's up about 10% or $510 an acre from last year's value. Cropland price values are at $6000 an acre, up $720 from last year. Well, pasture values are at $2,900 an acre, up $380 from 2021. Cash rents are also up across the state this year. The average is $149 an acre, with irrigated land renting for $250 an acre, up $13 from a year ago. But pasture land is bringing $36 an acre this year, and that's down a dollar from 2021. And a quick reminder for corn growers. If you want to enter the National Corn Yield Contest, today is the deadline. 
the National Corn Growers Association runs that contest. Last year's overall winner harvested a plot of over 600 bushels an acre. 603, actually. Can you imagine being in the combine at 600 bushels an acre? Well, with all the readers that are in the combines, it probably would go poof <laughs> to see that much around yeah, here. Yeah, you wouldn't be going. To, uh, you wouldn't be in road gear going across the field with that many acres, that many bushels. But again, it's it. And there's so many different divisions, so don't be intimidated by that. Although that is intimidating, 603 bushels an acre. But uh, again, they're irrigated, non-irrigated. Uh, you know, no-till, minimum till, all kinds of different categories. So if you want to enter, be sure and uh, be sure and get it done by today. Just go to the National Corn Growers website. Hey, it's a quarter to six at Wax, and uh, as we look at the fair schedule around the area this week, uh, State Fair ended on Sunday, and uh, so did the Clark County Fair and everything else. But uh, not many fairs around our part of the country this week. We'll be back next week at uh, Marshfield and places, but uh, who does have fairs this week? Well, Athens has their fair. But close by to us is Juneau County, Lincoln, and Ashland counties. All right. So there are fairs to get to, and maybe it's a good thing we don't have uh, fairs around our area because today is a nice day, but then Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, there is at least some rain in the forecast. Temperatures will be nice, though, in the upper 70s. And we've got some markets to get to. And we'll do that next on Wax. As again, we're at 57 degrees, looking for a high about 81 today. Wax 104.5 and the Midwest Farm Report. It's 14 minutes before 6 o'clock, 57 degrees out there. It's time to hear from Jim Lindsay and Equity El Tuna Market. Choice beef steers and heifers, dollar twenty-five to a dollar forty-seven. We had a top of a dollar forty-nine and a half. Choice dairy cross steers and heifers, dollar eighteen to a dollar forty-five. High yielding choice and prime Holstein steers, a dollar thirty-three to a dollar forty-five. We had a top of a dollar forty-seven. Choice Holstein steers, a dollar eighteen to a dollar thirty-two. Select underfinished heavyweight oversized steers and heifers, a dollar seventeen and down. Top twenty percent of the cull cows sold from eighty-one to ninety-eight. We had a top of a dollar and a half. 60% of the cows sold from 63 to 80. The bottom 20% of the cows sold from 62 and down. Organic market on Tuesday, 80% of the organic cows sold from 90 to $1.15. We had a top of $1.20 and a half. Bottom 20% of the organic cows sold from 89 and down. Cull bulls sold from 85 to $1.05. We had a top of $1.06 and a half. Thin, full horn and lightweight bulls all discounted. 80% of the 95-pound and up Holstein bull calves sold from 35 to $135 per head. Light and poor quality calves sold from $35 per head and down. Quality beef calves sold from $100 to $285 per head. We do sell organic cattle on Tuesdays at the Altoona Market. Please have all cattle and appropriate paperwork to the barn by 11 a.m. the day of sale. Our next special feeder sale is August 26th. All feeder sales are live on Cattle USA. If you have any questions about how to register as a bidder on Cattle USA or to consign cattle to upcoming sale, feel free to give us a call at 715-835-3104. To check out our early consignments, go to the Equity Livestock Market Consignment page and click on the Altoona Market. This has been Jim Lindsay reporting from Equity Livestock in Altoona. Have a great day. Feeding information to the folks who feed you. Wax 104.5 and the Midwest Farm Report. Almost 10 minutes to 6 here at Wax on this Wednesday morning. Again, another beautiful day forecast. Part of the cloudy, about 81.57 right now here at the shank of the day. Jerry Fitzgerald joins us. And uh, how'd you celebrate the anniversary of Elvis's death yesterday? Well, good morning to you. Uh, a lot of little errands. Today worked out. Uh, uh, just enough to meet, but uh, also uh, uh, that kind of guy. Well, it was a long time ago, but also uh, another very famous person died on August 6th, Babe Ruth. Oh wow! I didn't know that either. You're just a fountain I, of knowledge for us this morning. Did you uh, did you wear your blue suede shoes out raking hay yesterday? <laughs> no, we didn't have any hay to rake. Oh, okay. All right. Well, anyway, it was uh, Babe Ruth and Elvis two pretty. Pretty important people in this country over the years, passing away yeah. on this date. Well, how's the market going so far this year over at Stratford, or this week, rather, over at Stratford? All right, Bob, thank you, and Jill, and a very good morning, everyone. A summary from uh, yesterday uh, here at Equity Stratford. We'll start out with the organic market from yesterday. We do sell organic market cows every Tuesday. High yielding organic cows in yesterday's auction were from a dollar to a dollar fifteen. Lower yielding organics, ninety five and below. On the conventional type market cows in yesterday's auction, 85 to 94 on the high yielding cows. Uh, most of the cows yesterday selling from 65 to 85. 
And her cows, plenty of cows below 65. Are the bulls trade so far this week? Better quality bulls are mostly from uh, uh, 95 to $1.12. Lighter bulls below 90. And we'll have an update on the fed cattle tomorrow morning. Most of those will be sold today. And uh, the calves so far this week, we call the Holstein bull calves, 70 to 140. Uh, we did have a few 50 on Monday. Heifer calves, 45 and below. Beef calves, very strong, 175 to 350. And so far this week, they stopped at 415. Got a busy marketing day on tap here today at Equity Stratford. Uh, of course, a market auction today, a conventional type market cows, fed cattle, as I mentioned, and uh, baby calves, sheep, hog, and goats. Uh, feeder cattle will get started around noon, 12.15 in that uh, area this afternoon. We do have a large run of feeder cattle today from, uh, here at Stratford. Uh, several large consignments, one very large consignment of uh, uh, Black Angus, Red Angus, cross steers and heifers, also some Hereford mixes in there. Most of these are going to be yearlings, weighing around 750, 800, already on some grain. We do also have a large consignment of Holstein steers, over 50 of those, all one owner cattle. Short term cattle, weighing from about 950 to 11. And of course, the other, other, uh, runs of feeder cattle, including Holsteins and beef cattle. So a lot of, a lot of feeder cattle today for the folks. And then that'll be about 12 o'clock. I want to mention again, we do have a listing of for private treaty sale of a complete herd dispersal of Pinsgauer cattle. So are you folks interested in that, take a look at our website, Equity Co-op, on the Stratford page. So, Bob, uh, top of the week already, uh, and I was looking at the radar, a little bit of some rain up way in the northern part, northeast of Minneapolis. Is that coming down or not? Well, it's going to be scattered around all day long. So, uh, you know, if you're under a cloud, you might get wet. That's about the way it is. You don't see many Pinsgauer cattle. I saw some uh, last week or two over in Germany and Austria, but you don't see many Pinsgauer around anymore. No, and uh, like I said, uh, a real nice herd is a smaller herd, but if somebody's really looking to buy a whole herd, uh, just let us know here, uh, 687-4101 on our website. Uh, really nice looking cow. You are correct. They're not, uh, but they're good hardy cattle. Uh, yeah, they are. A lot of them. Yeah, they're interested in that white tail over white over the tail head. That's for sure. Hey, you have a good one. We'll talk to you in the morning. You betcha, guys. Enjoy the day. We'll do it. Jerry Fitzgerald over there at the Equity Stratford Sale Barn. Keeping it rural. Wax 104.5 and the Midwest Farm Report. And taking a look at the rest of our grain and dairy markets. Brought to you by Synergy Cooperative. On the Board of Trade, prices were lower yesterday on some much-needed rain in many of the major growing areas of the country. Also concern about their relationship with China and the overall world economy. Well, one of the good things, we saw the September crude oil down $3.02 a barrel yesterday. Now at $86.39, the lowest oil has been since way back in March. So that trend is a good one. And overnight, after a down day yesterday, prices were higher on the board. December corn up two at six twelve this morning. The oats up two to three at four twelve. Wheat December up six to seven at eight oh nine a bushel. November soybeans up eleven at thirteen ninety two. Soybean meal for October up three dollars and forty cents at four hundred four dollars and ten cents. Country elevator prices. Doomer's grain of home and corn is at six oh four with soybeans at fourteen sixty six. Wheat and grain, Chippewa Falls and Connersville locations. Corn is at six sixteen, and soybeans are at fourteen twenty seven. And on the DTN screen, uh, not a lot of the elevators reporting. None of the old civi elevators reporting, but uh, we do have some numbers. Gold and plump corn today is six twenty two a bushel out at Elk Mound. Six twenty four on the corn, fourteen thirty seven on the beans. Sparta six fifty four and fourteen forty three at the ethanol plants. Boyceville, 652. Stanley, 649. The Richmond Grain Facility, 641. Cheese unchanged yesterday. Barrels, 194 and three quarters. A block's $1.89 a pound. Butter down two and a quarter at 296 and a quarter. August class three up a penny at 2017. September up 52 at 2087. October up 19 at 2098. November up 36 cents at 2164. And December class three milk up 18 cents at 2128. Prices higher through July. Once again, another pretty nice day. Maybe some scattered showers, but not very many today. Just part of the cloudy 81. Better chance as we go into tonight and into Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Chances of rain in the area. Temperatures in the 70s. Back to some sunshine on Sunday with a high of 78 right now. 57 degrees. Oh, it's nice out there. (laughs) 
You've been listening to the Midwest Farm Report. Available at WaxRadio.com in its entirety every day. Brought to you in part by Bluff Country Feed and Seed and Montovi. And the Chilson family of brand dealerships, Chippewa Falls and Kadak. On-demand content at WaxRadio.com.